All right, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm making a video about queuable Apex classes. Now, this is actually really useful functionality that can sort of replace future methods. Um, and I learned about these just recently because I was doing a project and as always I was using future methods, which I've used a lot in the past, uh, and I ran into a roadblock because I couldn't chain them together and I was, they were kind of conflicting. And that's when I discovered queuable classes. So I actually really like working with these and I wanna show them to you guys. So first of all, what we're gonna talk about is what are sort of the use cases or differences between future methods and queuable Apex classes. I'm gonna show you the basic structure of one of those classes. We're gonna build a class together. And then I'm gonna show you basically how do we chain them together? How do we schedule them so that they're running? And how do we monitor them to understand sort of the flow of the queue? So that's what we're gonna cover in this video. Um, obviously we're gonna be writing some Apex, so it's a little more technical, but let's just go ahead and get started. All right, let's take a look at the blog post. So let's look at some of the differences between future methods and queuable classes. First and foremost, you can use non-primitive types. So instead of just passing a string or an integer or a list, you can actually pass an Apex object you've created or any S object that exists in the system, including custom objects. Now, on top of that, you can also do chain executions. This just simply didn't exist with future methods. You could not chain them together to have one call the other once it executed. You can with queuable classes, so that's really huge. And last but not least, one thing that you can do that I really appreciate is job tracking. An admin can go into his configuration and can actually see which jobs are going to run on which objects. So now let's get started. Let's just log into Salesforce and let's open up our developer console. All right, so once we have that open, we will see that I've actually created three classes to begin with. One is called AFIP mock request. The other is called enrich lead data and it implements queuable and database allows call out. That means it can call out to an HTTP rest endpoint. Now we also have convert lead, which also implements queuable. Let's zoom in a little bit here so it's easier to see. And we're gonna start with our mock request. Now this is gonna be our HTTP request that we're going to make to some third party system to pull some data. And I'm using this as an example because this is something that is really likely uh, in real life, in a real life situation, you're going to hit an endpoint to get some data back. And you wanna queue this, you wanna put this in a queuable class because you don't actually have a good way of knowing how long this could take. It depends on the API. And additionally, you might wanna run some type of logic, some type of execution after you get that data. So this is a perfect example of where a queuable class is really, really useful. Um, but for now, we're just gonna set up this actual mock request. So I'm gonna make an object called response wrapper, which is going to actually store the data that the endpoint's going to return back to me. So that's the name of the company, some condition of its taxes, and then some information about its address, street, city, state, etc. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically deserialize a JSON response into this type. Now, I'll make a separate video about working with JSON in Salesforce. It can be a little bit complex, but once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. But essentially what I'm going to do is I'll take a string of JSON and I'll just deserialize it using this method into my response wrapper class. I just have to make sure that the structure of my JSON matches the structure of that class. Now I wanna make the method that's actually going to go and do the call out and get the information. And I'm gonna pass a business ID. Now, again, this is a mock endpoint that I'm putting together using Mockaroo. Just to illustrate what a method like this would look like, I'm not actually going to pass it a real business ID because it's not a real endpoint, but I wanna build this, the function as if it were real, just so that I can demonstrate at least what it would look like. So anyways, we'll create an HTTP request and we'll set the endpoint. So that's the base URL. We're gonna include the API key and we're gonna include some parameters. And we'll make sure it's a post. And then we create an HTTP class and an HTTP response. And we send the HTTP using h.send, HTTP send method. We send the request and then we get the response and we get the body out of the response, which is just going to be the text of the JSON response. Now, we just need to make sure that we take that response and we deserialize it. So let's go take that empty string we had from before and 
we'll put git callout response, and then we'll just, again, pass the business ID that's the parameter of our constructor. All right, now before we move on to actually creating our cubable classes, let's test to make sure this mock request class we set up is working. And by that I mean, let's test to make sure it's gonna give us some data back. So using my execute anonymous, I'll create one of those requests and I'll look at my logs, I'll look at the debug only, and I can see that it's actually returned to me the data that I want. So it has all of the different parameters that I want. It's a response wrapper object that includes a city, a company, um, a state, and a street address, and even a tax condition. So that's perfect. I'm getting the data that I want. Now I just need to make sure that I can build a queuable class that executes some action once that data is actually retrieved. So the first thing we want to do is we want to queue the action that's going to go get that data, right? So let's create a couple of variables here. We're going to have a string, which, are, which is our business ID, and we're going to have a lead, which is the lead we're going to enrich and then update. Now let's create our constructor. So we're going to pass it a lead ID, and then we're going to pass it a business ID. And with the business ID, we can just directly set that string. With the lead ID, we're gonna go and query to find the lead that matches that ID. And we're gonna get the ID, the company, the tax condition, and the address. Those are the fields we're going to set with the data we're going to pull from that REST request. So we're gonna create that AFIP request. And now we just need to take the data from that request and assign it to the related fields. So let's just go ahead and copy this a bunch of times. And now all we have to do is make sure all of our field names match with their corresponding piece of data within that um, request. So company, tax condition, street, city, state, we're all set. All right, now we're just gonna make a simple try catch block. We're gonna try and update this lead and if it fails, we're just going to catch that error. Now here's where we would call the second chained job. Now let's write that second chain job. So once we've enriched this lead with that data from the callout, let's convert it now automatically. All right, so we'll just set up this class. Um, we'll set up the member variables and let's start with our constructor. So we'll set that lead uh, using the lead ID and that's essentially all we need to do in the, in the constructor. Now within the execute method, what actually runs when you call this we're going to do a basic uh, lead conversion. Now you can find this code all over the internet. It's super standard. Uh, basically you query for what's called a lead status object, and then you create a database.lead convert object. You pass that more or less the lead ID and, um, and that lead status that you've queried. And there are some other options if you wanna avoid making specific objects, etc. But we're just gonna do a standard conversion. You just create that lead convert object, you set those fields, you create a lead convert result, and you try to convert the lead. Now, if the result is not successful, I'm just gonna go ahead and debug the errors. So that's it. We've set up our three classes. Now we're gonna go back to the second class and we're gonna chain them together, super important. So in order to chain them together, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use system.inQJob. And now I just need to create a new instance of that job. So I'll create a new convert lead and I'll pass it that lead ID. So now I've chained them together. And what I'm gonna to want to do is now test it. So I have this lead right here. I'm gonna grab this ID. We'll go back to our developer console. We'll open up our um, execute anonymous window and let's create a job. So let's actually just call the first class and let's hope that it will call the second class. So we'll do enrich lead data and we'll pass it the two parameters it needs, a lead ID and some business ID, which is just fake um, because like I said, we don't actually need that information. And we're gonna execute that code. Now, if I go to my logs and I look at the debug, I'll actually see that what it returned was a job. So that's the ID of an Apex job. Now, if I go into my system and I actually look at that ID, I'm gonna see that that ID has expired because that job actually already got run. But if I go to my setup and I refresh, I can actually see that lead has been converted. And I can see the contact account and opportunity that were created. And I can see the address was set. I can see the account name exists, which means the company name was properly set. 
And if I go and look at the opportunity, I can see those same, those same fields. Uh, I can see the opportunity name and the account name were based on the company name. And I can see that the tax condition is there. So last thing, let's just go to the setup and let's go and try and find that job again. Now, if I go into my setup and I search for jobs and I click on Apex jobs, this will give me a list of all of the jobs that have run recently. Now, I can see the two concubable jobs have recently run. And if I go to the right, I can see Enrich Lead Data and Convert Lead both ran one after another. Now, if I search for that ID that it gave back to me, that ID corresponds to the Enrich Lead Data job. All right, so that's all. Hopefully this video was useful to you guys. If it was, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, I make new videos every single week, so stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next one.